Welcome back to the Pedro and Hannibal podcast. Another teaser. This is the last teaser. Teaser, 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 baby. <laughs> Very last one. My name is Hannibal. I'm talking to my bro, Pedro. How are you doing this evening? Mm, I'm doing great. I'm doing well, man. I'm lost track of days. It's Tuesday, but it feels like a Monday, but I'm doing good. Yeah. And to anyone who decides to listen to this, it doesn't matter, but we are recording this in the evening time. I hope you guys are doing well. Yes. And this episode very special one um this kind of came out of nowhere i think i was just on youtube or maybe i was browsing through netflix and i said i didn't see this documentary of kanye west genius and i, was, and I asked Pedro, i said did you watch it and he said he didn't and he was like hey how about we watch it and then talk about it after we watch these uh episodes and man i mean there's so much to say man there's just so much to say about this uh I guess it's 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 an epic, right? Like each it's three episodes, but it's like ninety minutes, I think, of of each one, each episode, yeah. Heavy content, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so let me ask you, Pedro, how did you watch it? Did you watch it fully through? Did you uh, sit in like you know in your couch in your living room and just you know binge? I know binging is a thing that people do especially with Netflix. Like how, how did you watch this documentary? I definitely didn't binge. I don't binge anymore. I used to, but I don't, not anymore. So I watched it one episode at a time within a period of four different days, I guess, or so. I had actually started watching it the first like 20 or 30 minutes, a few months back, like when it came out Yeah. and like something happened and I had to like stop watching it and I didn't get back to it. Um, but I watched it in separate days. So same thing with me. I'm not a binger anymore. I don't know if that's just a young person's thing now. Like I actually like watching an episode of something and it was a good cliffhanger, but don't necessarily watch it like, oh, I'll get back to this later. Yeah. Or, you know, I've I've, I've watched it and it's just so much emotion, or it just you just drain out of the experience. Like, I need a break. I, I used to like binge to watch. watch. I used mm-hmm. to binge watch a lot more when I was, you know, younger or whatever, a good show, you know, but I just don't watch TV anymore like that. Yeah. I just don't, I just don't, yeah. I watch YouTube. I listen to other things. I'm, you know, got the baby, you know, keep me up at night, you know? So I just don't do the binging anymore. And even yeah. if like, they're like certain shows I think are going to be interesting to me, I start watching. I'm like, I'm just not really into this anymore. I've seen, you know, it just doesn't do it for me. <laughs> TV doesn't do it for me anymore. So I watched it in separate, separate times and I did that on purpose and listen I thought it was really 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 good yeah you know I'm a you know we are both very big Kanye West fans I I say that and some people cringe I I absolutely love everything about Kanye West even the times when he goes crazy and he says crazy things I feel like that's him and he's he's saying things sometimes that hurt and you don't want to hear it but you maybe need to hear it and there's you look back and say, man, maybe was he right? I know that's crazy, but was he right? Like, so I, I'm a huge, you know, he's from Chicago. Um, this documentary filmed certain places. And I was like, man, I know exactly where that is. Like, oh, that must have been awesome. Yeah. yeah, this was a really good, I thought the, the, the cootie guy did really good. So, yeah, um, let us, we got to step back and just explain, you know, I'm sure, you know, hopefully you guys have checked it out. Um, it was basically Kanye already had his idea. Like, I, yeah, I would film a documentary. And then he had this good friend of his, Cootie, which was a stand-up comedian. And on blind faith, he decided to to take a step back from the stand-up comedian stuff and film this guy who hasn't been signed yet. Didn't have an album. He was not who we all think of him now. He was a really good Chicago-based producer. That just produced a lot of raps and a lot of good tracks, and everyone in Chicago knew him. Like Kanye West is the place, the guy you get. And it said in the documentary, cheap beats, cheap quality beats. Like he, he you was, know, he yeah, he was like he was money. basically a, a neighborhood star. He was a star in like the neighborhood. People knew him, you know. Then he got with Jay Z, did a couple of tracks on the Blueprint, and his right. name was getting out there. And I think Kanye was like, "All right, I see the vision. Let's you know, let's do something here." And this was. The foreshadowing is like crazy because this is twenty plus year, twenty years ago. Twenty year, twenty of years content was was created. So they the first, like you said, the first act is Act One. That's the first episode, uh, Vision. So he hasn't even out. Yeah, he didn't get signed yet. So I don't know if he did Blueprint yet. He was still this Chicago-based rapper, and 
you know, the awesome thing about it is you see all the Chicago rappers and they all have this uh, battle of trying to make it mainstream because, you know, it's, it's a, it, it is a bit of an elitist um, regional thing with hip hop, right? It's the, it's the coast is, and then down south, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, you, the East kind of created, like New York, it happened in the Bronx. So they're going to, they're going to check their guys first. You know, like rap with it, those people are, are going to be checked out. Then you had the you know, it's West Coast, and then for a good while, down south just destroyed everybody. Like Not it was cool. Master P, and you got you know like you know, and then you had like you know you had Bone Thugs and Harmony did their thing for a little while, and then the Midwest, and they're they're the Midwest, right? Yeah. Uh, Ohio, and they were really big in Chicago, really big. Bone Thugs was really big in Chicago, yeah. and then you had um, uh, Outkast. From Atlanta had their time, right? Yeah, yeah. So then you had Texas with like Scarface and some of those guys, but it was, you know, it's East Coast, West Coast. That's what it is. Yeah, That's it's nice to media, right? Like, yeah. you you know, when you listen to sports media, they're going to talk about the Lakers. They're going to try to find a way to talk about LeBron every time when LeBron's not even in the playoffs. They're going to talk about, and they're going to talk about New York. So, like, if you're really into baseball, they're going to talk about those Yankees yep. all the time. And you could be, no, you could, you could be in Chicago, I'm like, Really, ESPN gonna talk about the Yankees? Uh, you know, but it's just so fighting for attention in in hip hop is such a it's hard. So Kanye was just trying to make it, just and you can see the grind, you see the hustle, you see all these amazing things that he knew. Well, well, well the biggest surprise I actually was your biggest surprise from just watching. You go, you could talk about different acts, but the first act I realized. This guy was not going to be denied. He knew he was a rapper. He was a performer. Yeah. He wasn't just a producer. And I think a lot of the people looked at him and said, yeah, I don't know, man. Just just produce tracks. Man. Like, we, you know, stay in your lane. Seems like that was a thing that was coming out. Like, stay in your lane. And he refused to accept that kind of... Uh, he didn't refuse to accept that. He's like, no, I'm a rapper. So yeah. uh, what's your biggest, like, surprise you got out of the... The on the first episode, I, uh, you know, I'm thinking back to that time. It was great to watch because you get to see so many, you know, I remember the listening to the music at that time. I'm like 20, 21, and I'm listening to the, and I remember like, okay, I remember that song, I remember that CD, you know. And in the first episode, you know, you have really big influ- influential hip hop legends, some might say, kind of helping, guiding, or whatever, Kanye West, you know, you Pharrell and Common, which is a, at that point, the biggest he was the guy in Chicago. Chicago. He's, he's yeah. Chicago guy. Yeah, like Twister, you know, like he made a cameo thing in the second episode. But you have people like, you know, uh, uh, Scarface coming to listen to some tracks. Like these are hip hop legends, right? And you know, most deaf, right? You, you got most deaf, one of the most lyrically fantastic artists of that particular era, right? Mm-hmm. Or really any era, right? Putting word pl- words together, right? And they're sitting there ciphering, freestyling back and forth. And most deaf has a moment of like, man, okay, hold on. This guy's not just a producer, yeah. right? So for me, I look, my surprise was like, yeah, people wanted to put him in that box because back in the day you had Puff Daddy was a producer, then he wanted to rap. Jermaine Dupree, producer, then he wanted to rap. You had people like Pharrell Williams, producer, then he started rapping. Timbaland, producer, then started rapping. Dr. Dre, producer, started rapping. So you had all these people that were trying to do their own, you know, becoming a producer to a rapper. Some of them had some success, but it wasn't like they were really, you know, you didn't look at Puff Daddy as like, oh, he's a he's an MC. Absolutely yeah, not. unless you were like a small nerd, like like probably like myself. When when Puff Daddy and the Family album came out, I, I mean, was, it's I a great album. Was the it's most, but I'm it's like, a great album. You don't realize the behind the scenes of like he didn't rap, he didn't write those damn rhymes. No, he was no. gonna be. So you you kind of yeah you're right that the producer rapper more like it's yeah first word producer rapper and, and Kanye and, for me is yeah. like trying to really it's like no nah, I'm a rapper like you know I'm gonna you know at one point you even reference say hey I've learned from these people I learned how to make beats from No ID and all these people so then I became a great producer I learned I've seen Jay Z in the lab I see what he does so I'm gonna be a great rapper and I think he knew he had more to offer and he just wasn't gonna take no for an answer. Yeah. And he signs with Rockefeller and then they keep pushing his release date back. They cut his budget. So then he has to put his own money, which is crazy to like get his own video going and make his own music and all this stuff. He gets in an accident. 
that kind of stalls some things. Dame Dash, I think. Dame Dash, I've never been a fan of him. I, in this documentary, he, he kind of rubs me like he like, looked at Kanye. He's like, yeah, this guy's like a genius. Like, I don't want to mess with him because he's going to take my spot kind of deal. Like, I feel like he pushed him off to the side a little bit. And eventually Kanye did his thing because he had he bet on himself. And he was just doing it. He's like, I'm going to I know I can rap. You know, I know I, I respect these guys like Jay-Z and all these people, but like I'm on their level. And, you know, the surprise yeah. for me, I, I don't know if I was surprised because like he he's had that mentality. He, they even reference the talent shows. He, he would always win first place. And the one year he didn't win, he was really upset. You know, like like he always wants to win. He's super competitive. He's got a lot of drive. And and, you know, it was just fun looking back and seeing, you know, one of the things that like got me is when he was sharing a song with Pharrell Williams, which at the time he had Neptunes and all that. And like, Pharrell, he was I mean, like, he's, he's up there with one of my favorite producers. Yeah, at that song, time, yeah. he's at that time, he's probably the most coveted producer. He was working with a lot of people. Yeah. Right. Definitely. And he would, you know, super talented, different sound, you know, just. And Pharrell's listening to this song, like, damn, this Kanye guy's like, and he walks, he walks out of the studio. He's walking down the hall <laughs> and I'm thinking Pharrell knows that he ain't the best anymore. Like, you know, I think people had moments with Kanye, like, oh, man, this guy's coming for us. Yeah. And he, he's a producer and he can rap. And he's like talking about different stuff. And so I just was like, it was just it was it was really cool to see that, man. Like just to see his evolution. You know, I, I had to I, I, I re-listened to the college dropout just because I see how like him put, putting it together and a lot of stuff. And it's interesting because there's not a lot of surprises because he raps about a lot of the stuff that happened. In all the tracks, especially you know, late registration, he had a lot of songs, a few songs where he's saying, "I'm trying hard to say I can rap, and they're not taking me seriously, yeah. and just got to keep going and keep going." So he always made sure that he made people listen to it. Hey, you, you know, he'll ask, and he'll force it, but like, can you check this out? Yeah. And that's why I, I notice every once in a while when you see him in the wild, you know, in the public, there's a, a few of these videos where he will allow someone to spit for him. Like if someone comes up to him and catch him in the right time and say, "Yo, I got, yo, put, yo, listen to me to see if you can put me on." He at least gives that time to listen, because he he had that opportunity where people listen to his work, and that's very important. Like to get yeah. to get a chance because he knew how hard it was, for yeah. the first to get signed. I mean, getting signed, like you're producing all these tracks for all these people, and you can tell how the industry was kind of he wanted him to stay as a producer. Yeah. He did not want him to be a rapper. It was like you're wasting. Wasting good beats, <laughs> right? Like we would take these beats. Same thing when he just actually gets signed to Rockefeller. You know, Rockefeller at this point was destroying everything they had. Oh, they were on. Beats. They were everywhere. Yeah. So they were like, it felt like at one point, I think they signed him because they kind of want him to make all the good beats for them. Yep. And they had they had a yeah. slew of new artists coming up. They were you know riding that train of yeah, like, being yeah. single in there. They had yeah. they had. I mean, they had all they had everybody in there, and and they knew they. Guy had a special talent for producing, but they did not view him in the same level. Like you're just like you said, a producer rapper. Yeah. And he had to push and push and push, show up to the record label. Anyone who's li- willing to listen, check my music out. Like you said, the idea that he gets in his car accident, he's my he's probably might as well supposed to be moving his jaw. Yeah. I mean, the way his jaw was like basically needing to be reconstructed. And he's like, No, I can't stop. I can't stop because uh, that this is it. And he put everything into that. And I think that was the most. Um, I think, I mean, the through, the through the Wire song is a classic. The video with the song and how it was done and the backstory of it, like that is an amazing. I mean, I remember when I saw I was like, damn, Kanye. Like, you know, I knew who Kanye was, obviously, from other things. But I'm like, this is dip. You know, this is this is crazy because it's real. Right. Because, yeah. you know, with rap, what I love about hip hop and rap is that you do have people talking and rapping and telling stories about their neighborhood, their experiences growing up, having to do this and having to do that to get by. Right. Yeah. And they're sharing her story. But like Kanye, when he's storytelling, it's very different. It's not like Jay-Z and Nas and Biggie, like, you know, the life that he would, his growing up was extremely different than those guys. Right. So his music and his hip hop is resonated, I think, and why he's so big with a whole nother genre. So you're going to get the hip hop people already, right? But yeah. then you're going to get a whole nother kind of subset of people that are going to want to listen. I think that's why he's so big because he had something, he was saying things that weren't really being said and rapped about. 
and it was popular music. So then it gets to the masses. And, you know, I just think it was, it was, it was really cool to see all the people that, like you said earlier, he would say, Hey, I want you to listen to this. Can you do this? You know, he's got Scarface in the studio listening to stuff. He didn't work with them, but he's like, I like that. I like that. Yeah, I think he he played family business. Uh, yes. yes. For him. He was like, yeah, that's hot. Like, and know, it's like, you know, I, I think a lot of times I, what I got from it, this is my opinion. People like him and Pharrell and even Jay-Z are, you know, Puff Daddy's in it, you know, common. They're, we're walking away most deaf, walking away from their interaction with Kanye. Like, damn, this, like he's coming. Like, this guy's super talented. It's not just, yeah. it's like a light bulb. Like, no, nah, he's not just making beats. This guy, this guy can rhyme. He's got something to say. It's different. So I th- there's that competitiveness there, I think. And I think people were kind of like standoffish. Like, damn, he's like, he's coming for us. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know, I, I also feel like, you know, I don't think they necessarily was like holding him back. It was I'm trying to think of the year 2000 ish. You know, it's because of 20 years ago. Yeah. What you would consider a um, platinum rapper, a big, famous rapper that's killing it. It didn't look like Kanye. That person no. did not look like Kanye. And I'll yeah. be honest, as a fellow nerd, he looked like a nerd. He looked like a music nerd. Yeah. Like he he has some style. But he had the braces or the retainers, and he's like, I can rap, and people looking like looking at him and like, nah, dude, I think you just stay behind the, you know, you you're not in the booth, you outside the booth messing with the levels. Like he yep. didn't look, and and I, I'm wondering that's why this public persona of Kanye is such strong ego boosting of I am the best at this, and I'm sure he probably believes it, but I'm saying I'm wondering that brings out the more entertainment rapper persona that is necessary mm-hmm. to make it what do you think yeah. about that yeah i don't that's, a, that's interesting because i think because the first he, act did you think he looked like a rap like yeah man you should sign him why we're not signing him? no I'm like, no I kanye west why. kanye west to me at that time <laughs> i thought it was, it was funny going back in time because i'm like i'm looking at like you know jay-z and dame dash and pd crack i was like oh i remember pd crack yeah, that was horrible. Yeah, yeah. right i see beat and they're all wearing over whites shirts they all got jerseys on every single that was the style big baggy jeans like if a guy looked like that now we clown him right but that was the style but Mm -hmm. kanye didn't really dress like that kanye was the guy like that i went to high school with that wasn't the coolest most popular dude he tried to kind of dress like the cool guys you know maybe he had a chain on or something but like the outfit wasn't quite right all the time right maybe he had busted sneakers but they had the good shirt like but he didn't care because he still had confidence. He wanted to be different because he was, you know, he didn't really like, all right, well, the style is this. So I'm going to do it now. Nah, I'm going to make my own style. Like, so he was kind of like not what was normal at that time. Right. Yeah. Um, for at least the, where he was at, like Chicago is always like a mix between Midwest. But then there's a lot of East Coast flavor within that music. Mm-hmm. Right. But then like the East Coast is like, all right, those guys all had chains and they had the, you know, Everything Jersey, oversized, oversized everything, oversized everything, and you know, like everything was glitzy and like you know, it was just so. Some of, like, and even some of that Rockefeller stuff that they were coming out with was like super whack to me. I remember if Jay Z wasn't on it, it was not, and Beanie had some stuff, but like it was like not great. Yeah, you know, you're not a big fan of Beanie Siegel. No, I like Beanie Siegel, but <clears throat> they didn't push him enough anyway. Like they, you know, he he had a couple albums, but they didn't. I don't think Beanie was feeling, it, but like. Petey Craig and they had like a that, the one woman, a Millie or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. They she just had, had a lot she of had a good voice, but yeah, they didn't. I don't, I, I don't think she was putting in the yeah, effort. Jay Z did all that, and it was, that's all Jay Z. Even Memphis Bleak, right? Like he didn't really do. You know, there was a lot of that, and I just think it was a lot of cookie cutter. And Kanye wasn't cookie cutter; he was different. And I think mm-hmm. they knew that, so they didn't accept him. He's not a street guy. Right. He's that's not, part of first. That's part of the biggest reason. He's not a street. That they dude. can't relate. He's like, I can't really relate to this guy because they could say no. he's from Chicago. But even then, they can relate to other rappers from other places. You know, Jay-Z was able to work with a lot of other people, but he just looked at him and was like, nah, you just not. He just didn't feel it. Yeah. But I think what Kanye proved in at least definitely in the second act, he all right, you guys not you guys not helping me. As much as I probably should get, you signed yeah. me to this label a year ago. You said at one point, he's like, "He signed me a year ago, and I'm not getting any kind of traction. I'm gonna put this album together by myself. I'm gonna show you what I can do." 
And then you notice right after that that album hits, everyone's on his nuts. Like, all right, everyone. Oh. They, he he opened every door now. Every door is open for him. He won so three Grammys. That, he won three Grammys. His debut album won three Grammys. I mean, that's before that, cool. he wasn't getting no play. Any play. And I, I think personally, I can relate to that grind you know being a trying to be a content creator it doesn't really matter what you're trying to do but like for personally for me you understand that it kind of didn't jump in and just became famous and successful like you're gonna have to eat shit you're gonna have to work and work and work harder than everybody else put more effort into it put more effort into it and the people who may not understand or may not get it keep improving but you just keep moving that and that's one of the things i've seen or enjoyed from this documentary his drive that could actually if you look at you know we could talk about in the third act kind of goes to a detriment the drive the the i gotta keep working i think you know but just for initial point of no i can i i want to be a rapper since i was i think they had a video of him in 1990 rapping no that dude was always the rapper yeah and he had to keep push it to for all of us to recognize him as a rapper yeah i think you know i I don't know if they touched on this and I don't know this to be true, but it's, it could be even that he got into being a producer because he just wanted to be in that scene. And that was how, that's how he could do it. Cause you know, a lot of rappers, right. You're, you're coming from a street you're rapping about street stuff, right. That's mm-hmm. what it is, especially back then. Right. And then it became a little glitzy with like Puff Daddy and Mace. And like, that was cool. I love that. Right. But like, it was different. Right. But like, maybe he got into the producing cause that was his foot in. Cause he's always been, a, you know, even when, when he was a kid, you know, he referenced he did like Stevie Wonder songs and Michael Jackson. He won talent shows. He's a performer, not a producer. He's a performer at heart first. He's an artist. That's how I look at it. And mm-hmm. he he does his art. He started it with producing. That's how he started. But then at the end of the day, he wants to be the show. Kanye is a show. He's a one man show. He's a record. Yeah. Like, that's what he is. And I think he knew that. And maybe just to get in because, he, you know, he couldn't do it as a rapper initially. He chose to produce away and then started learning how to cultivate the rap skills through people as he's producing beats for them. And I think it's 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 a genius move. I mean, if that's what he did, because it obviously worked. But I just think, you know, when you're not coming from the streets like that and you're in Chicago, you're not in New York, it's going to be hard. Right. So, well, it was definitely hard. It was definitely difficult when he did it, when he did it 20 years ago. Very, very hard now. He made yeah. that lane. He made a lane for other, you can call them backpackers, but not every, you know, like Jake Cole is not hood. He, you know, no. he came from probably not, you know, not the best circumstances, but he's not hood. Like Kid, see, Kid Cudi's rap, not hood. Yeah. So it's like he he put that that ability, like, hey, you don't have to necessarily be a gangbanger drug dealer and still have a story. You can still have a story to tell. Yeah. And yeah, I, I would say he's the first for him. Um, I don't know if you're a big fan of Kid Cudi. I like I mean, Kid Cudi. Sounds I, like Kid Cudi. I mean, I th- uh, one of the biggest influential rappers or artists in the last 20 years to me is, is Kid, Kid Cudi. Cudi. Yeah, uh, well, especially you know. with a lot of these new, the newer, the last like 10 to 12 years. Th- if they say who's your influence, a lot of them say Kid Cudi. Yes, I mean, a you lot. know, super sad. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, he, he tells right now he, he suffers from you know depression and. But he just pours it all into his music, and I see why uh, Kanye and K- Kid Cudi kind of came together. Hopefully, they work it out. I know right now they're not friends, but hopefully, they work it out. Yeah. But um, I would would talk about probably one of the sadder things is of this of just watching documentary. Him and his mom, man, like him and his Dude. mom interacting. Sometimes I had to take a break. Sometimes I was watching it and seeing her talk to him. I was like, yeah, okay, let me take a little break, man, because I'm so lucky to have my mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you just had your know, mom just had a birthday, yeah, yeah. and you you kind of realize the effect of your mom being there. So, I mean, we could talk about it right now. The idea when that yeah. woman leaves his life, everything went to shit. Everything went to shit, and oh, the documentary kind of went to shit, right? Because yeah, they, if they would have kept it going, it, they would have had everything, right? All of the albums. It kind of just went from college dropout to. 2016. I forgot the they, where they went. They, it was a long period of yeah. He's working, making all these records, killing it, but his mom is not there, and you could tell it affected everything about him. Yeah, and it, it, when she passed, he was still on the 
the the he was still his star was still rising. He was, you know, but like his I didn't know a lot about his mom. You know, I knew her name was Donda. I knew that was a big, you know, I didn't. But I hadn't really I've seen pictures of her. I never really had heard her on camera or anything like that. I've heard her in songs. Doing yeah, I think, she, I think she's like got a degree. Of, yeah. A what a remarkable when I, what yeah. a remarkable woman. Like yeah. her interactions. It was just like to see that all the love and, and she, she kept him. You could tell like he's up there high energy and she was probably the one one few people that could probably tell, you know, get him to calm down, get yes. him to kind of yes. think and reflect. And and they they show the kind of they sh- they they actually put the nine one one call of her not breathing through the surgery, yeah. and it's just tough to watch, man. Because you could tell this is yeah this is when Kanye kind of just starts going. There's no one to there's no one to calm down. There's no one there's to calm him down. Yes, and I think it's like she knew her son was this great guy, this great giant. Right, giants don't see themselves in the mirror. That's what she told him. And when she was talking, I'm like, wow, you know. So she's boosting up her son, knowing he's bound for greatness. But then she's also able to calm him down and bring him down to earth because that's his mom. Right. So she gives him this balance. So when she passes, the balance is gone and he's left with, okay, well, I'm the biggest rock star because, you know, he's a rock star. He's not a hip hop star. He's a rock star. And that's there's there's a few hip hop stars that are like that. He's one of them. Like it transcends hip hop, in my opinion. He's a cultural icon. Right. And yeah. he was going in that direction. His mom passes. So now it's like, all right, I got all the ego of a rock star. I got all the money I could ever have. Right. I got all everybody around me telling me every, all the yes men I need. I got, you know, I got all these cr- great ideas, but, you know, don't know how to what to do with them. And his mom passes and it just kind of crumbles, I think. And he doesn't have anybody there to pick the pieces up, you know. And um, it's sad, man. It's, 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 it's super sad because I think. It's bittersweet probably for him because at the end of the day, I think it pushed him to do a lot of other great things because I think, you know, he referenced his mom would want him to be on stage because he worked through the pain. Right. Yeah. And he used music as kind of an outlet. But she just seemed like such a remarkable woman, like just the conversations they'd have. And like you'd see him when Kanye West, when I'm watching this documentary and when when him and his mother are in the same room together or they're talking, he's a different Kanye West. And when he when she's not in the documentary and he's around his friends or he's by himself or he's doing his music, he's a little different. He's like a young boy full of joy in life when he's with his mom. And, you know, the way he talks to her, he's not loud. He's, he's not listening. Loud. When she speaks. He's just exorbitant. He's, he's not exactly, a, no exactly. Ego there. She, he knows what, what she's saying makes sense. It's worked out. So yeah, you, you, you hit the nail on the head perfectly. It, the balance was off and, um, like I think one of the biggest, you could tell right after that scene, they show him performing. I don't even, I didn't know this. A week later, you can't. That's not a healthy Crazy. way of dealing with grief. Um, you can't, you know, performing a week later after someone significant of you passes. That is not healthy. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. You know, we're not psychiatrists or anything. I would think, yeah, that it's not going to work. I yeah. mean, and it and it and it, it didn't because he you know he obviously had some breakdowns and he's bipolar and he's been medicated and just going through all this stuff. But it's like it's it's just so it's just crazy. And then you know, I meant I forgot to mention this. You know, imagine being I'm I'm trying to put myself like in his shoes a little bit, right? I'm thinking like, wow, you know, imagine being a kid from Chicago. You have all these dreams. You got a mom that's like very inspirational for you. And like, you know, she's musically, you can tell she's musically talented as well. She's in the kitchen when she's rapping with him and she's, you know, you can tell music's a part of her life. But imagine being a kid from Chicago. You write a song for your mom. And years later, you're rapping that song to your mother. Your mother's sitting next to Oprah Winfrey. And that's a Chicago show. Oprah's the queen of Chicago. I mean, this kid came from that to that. And then his mom leaves like, I mean, and then it was such a you know crazy. tragic accident type of thing to a point. Like, damn, did she need she need that surgery? She didn't need, yeah. she's good, but you know, sur- those surgeries probably performed thousands of times with no problems, and it just some things went wrong. And I couldn't. And that sh- it also kind of shows the strength and his ability. Like you're saying, like they kind of push through the pain and still perform at a high level. Yeah, 
a high level, not just making it like make still making the best music. You know, we all say we miss the old Kanye and I think I miss the old Kanye. I like the soul beat Kanye, but even the other stuff he's done still, you know, record breaking still, yeah. you know, 20 something Grammys, but I don't know how he did it. I don't, I, I'm going to think about uh, being in his shoes and hearing the sto- uh, news that your mother passed. Yeah. I don't think I'm able to perform in a week. Like, I, I, don't think I, I don't think I ever told you this. So last year, my grandmother, uh, she passed. She was in 90. She was 92. So, you know, she lived a long life. But I was doing Instacart. Now, guys, you may not know what Instacart is, but I'm shopping for food for someone else. Right. And I got the text from my father. He said she and also it was going. It, we kind of knew that was going. It was going um, yeah. in the last week or so. But I got that text from my dad. And he said, I can't stop crying. And I never heard, I never saw my father cry. But so he, but he texted this to me. And I, he, he, told, never, he told you that. He told you that in a text. Yeah. He's like, I can't stop crying. She Man. passed. But she she gone. She left us. I don't remember too much about that whole Instacart thing. Like, mm-hmm. I think I was doing it. I was fighting not to cry. I was putting the groceries in. I didn't want to call attention to myself at the and it was at the checkout line too. I didn't want to yeah. I kind of wow. just and I was like, okay, this is just one uh, job, like one little delivery. Let me get through this. So I had to get through it. I don't think I tried to call anyone. I was like, let me just get through this, get in this yeah. car, do this job, drop this off. And I just sat in the car, man. Cause like, yeah, like, so uh, this is something mundane is shopping for groceries. This guy is putting out concerts a yeah. week later. Yeah. That is, uh, you know, he has a brain that few people can have. Uh, he'll do that. I think it's hard to it's hard to think about or even fathom what one would do in that situation because he's in a very unique position, right? So you have that happening with your mother, tragically. But then you also have a lot of people around you that depend on you for jobs and for things, right? For leadership, you know. At that point in his career, you know, he doesn't make records. He doesn't put concerts out. A lot of other people don't eat, right? So there's a lot of other layers to maybe his decision making. And a lot of people, a lot of people, I think, and like you said earlier, in an unhealthy way, deal with grief by just working and not and trying not to say, oh, well, my mom would want me to be on stage right now. That could be true, but like, do you need to be there? Like, should you be taking some time off, reflecting, spend, spending time with just your intimate? Uh, family, but like he might have looked at it like I just I'm not ready to deal with it yet, and I need I got people around me that depend on me. I'm gonna keep grinding. I'm you know I got these dreams, I got these goals still, and you know I don't know what I would do. I think you know I might be somebody that wouldn't be able to face it right away. I might continue just to work. You know yeah. I might continue to do a podcast and do YouTube and whatever. I don't know because you know it's hard to say until it happens. You know, but like. Yeah. You know. I think you're right, though. I think you're right. I think he only and it, they kind of they've, they've, they said it on one part of I forgot who said it. He feels normal when he's making music. He feels yeah. comfortable making music. And so I mentally, think that, that, could, that might be good for him. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I think I think the, no one telling him to chill. No one telling him to calm down. Then that's where all the celebrity stuff comes in and. You know, our thoughts of, you know, deciding to be with a Kardashian, like Kardashian, you know, you we know, don't talk about it too much, but she has done some good work uh, helping out people in situations in jail where she was able to get them released. Prison reform, yeah. yeah. Yeah, reform. And, and, that, and sometimes people kind of forget that and they're like, they're worried about the celebrity and the reality. So it's like, all right, that's entertainment. But she got one woman out that was in jail that was going to probably stay in jail for her whole life and got her out. That, in my opinion, cleans up a lot of her stuff. You know, she's not she's not a criminal. She hasn't killed anybody. She has some tapes. I haven't gotten I haven't gotten anybody out of prison. <laughs> right? Right? Have you? If you had the resources, I'm sure you would. But at least she has the resources. She's like, you know what? I'm gonna talk she's, to the president. I'm gonna I'm gonna help. Yeah. She has helped enough people. Where no, I, do I watch her show? No, it's not for me. No, it's not. Yeah. I don't. But <laughs> go go ahead. Make the 15th keeping was it keeping yeah. with the, I, I don't care yeah so but you could tell that there was no one saying well 
should you join that celebrity family, Kanye? Do you think that's healthy for you? You know what I mean? It, 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 there yeah. was no one there telling him because who's gonna listen? Who's gonna? He don't listen to anybody. I don't. Who's but I don't listen? think I don't think Kanye West is the kind of guy that is gonna listen to anybody but his mom. Right. So yeah. I think he had some people around him that loved him. Clearly, they got him made a documentary. They were brought, you know, they, they grew up, you know, he knew him since he was a kid or whatever, you know, 17 and like, Cootie or whatever was like, I think 23 or 24 when they met. So he's a little older, probably looked at him as a younger brother. So he had a lot of people around him, but like nobody that could touch him in a way his mom did. Right. Yeah. And tell him and give him that balance. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't blame him for Kim. Car- you know, they, they got kids. They're, you know, I'm it, is sure what it, is. In love. <laughs> it is Kim Kardashian. So it's hard to say what you would do if you had the opportunity. Right. Yeah. So I think, you know, it is what it is. But I think, you know, that's part. I remember he did an interview talking about when they first were together, people, oh, you guys are the biggest, you know, couple ever. Like, you know, and he was like, yeah, we are like this is, you know, Kim, I married Marilyn Monroe. Like, you know, he he re- he, he compared her to Marilyn Monroe, which is like, you know. Marilyn Monroe's, you know, Marilyn Monroe, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'm married Marilyn Monroe. She's today's Marilyn Monroe. She's the most beautiful woman in the world. I, you know, I think Kanye just, I think he always wants that. He always wants to be looked upon as I'm number one. I got the best. I'm, I got the best beats. I got the best raps. I got the best girl. I got the best everything. I'm a genius. I'm going to you know, come up with the best things. I'm going to save the world. Like he just always puts himself first. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's why his marriage probably didn't go great all the way. Like, I think he's that, just different like that. It's to, you know, like, like I, and the last song he put out, I'm not sure if you watch or you listen to it. Um, he uh, I forgot the name of it. Was it True Love? He's talking about his kids, you know, going through the custody thing. Yeah. You know, made it seem like, wow, I have them. I feel like I'm borrowing them. Yeah. Because he has to take them back. Like they, yeah. they have a barcode. I forgot some of the lyrics. And he's like, you know, my light is always open. My door is always open. It's more that, you know, like, and that's, to, you know, there's, so many people out here dealing with custody battles. Like he just, you know, that's what shows that Kanye is a human being just like everybody yeah. else. Like you don't have to go through that. I mean, that's why it's really good. And you want to have a good relationship with the, your, your baby mom. You know what I mean? You want to have those yeah. kind of good relationships because it's going to be messy no matter if you're a billionaire or you have $3 like that. Oh, yeah. So it it, it, it's messy is messy, right? Like that's, you know, you could have all the money in the world, but it's messy and the kids don't really care that you're Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. You know what I'm saying? They're your mom and dad. dad. So it doesn't yeah. really matter to them. So. Um, and I guess we didn't talk about too much, but the relationship between um Cootie and him, like, cause he's kind of part of the story too. Cause he's putting this all together and you, you could tell how the relationship starts to turn when he and Kanye becomes more and more successful. Yeah. It's kind of sad, but you know, that's just how it is. It seems like in the, yeah. no matter how, what industry, whatever you're doing, like, at one point where Kanye is so drunk, he keeps misnaming him. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> and then at one point, he's like, yeah, man, I love the first video, but I got to get hype on this other video. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of like he's already about to he's 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 moving away. Yeah. To a point where it, it, sometimes he doesn't want me to tape him on the camera. Like it's like Kanye's changing, but I think maybe he's becoming more insular. Like he's he's guarding himself. Yeah, more, I, I mean, and he kind of it feels like he's shutting out his friend, but then it's yeah. nice that his friend does come back in a certain yeah. extent. Yeah, but I think I, it it's tough. That was tough to watch because you know this the guy that did the documentary, his friend, he's successful in his own right. He's not Kanye West, but he's successful. He's yeah. trapped, you know, he's making other videos and other things with other well-known artists. He's filming things, he's got a, his daughter's born, he's got a family. Like he's not just some bum, like he's a successful dude. So, yeah. but I think we have to remember and put it in relative terms. Like, this is Kanye West. It's like when you, He's when like you the get, biggest when star you get, ever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you get to a certain spot, you can't take everybody with you. I don't know, with the exception of maybe LeBron James. He brought basically all his boys with him, right? And that, but he's the exception, maybe. It's hard to like, you know, balance that, I think, because I think Kanye is looking at things like, okay, yeah we did this on this level and it worked, but like, I think Kanye in some ways is ahead of his time with certain things. And he understood, Hey, your vision might not be able to take it to the next level. And I love you, but like we, I'm, I'm going somewhere else. We're, we're still going to meet up at the Lisa end. Told him, at least he didn't yeah. really like went about the bush. He was like, yeah, I love your stuff, but this is I got to get hype on this one. Yeah. Hype Williams I mean, at one point 
I didn't even know he was still that high back at, in, in the 2000s, but I knew from the 90s. Oh, he was, was a successful rapper. You had hype direct one of your he, videos. He, yeah, and it was a million, cinematic, $2 million dollar project. Yeah. Yeah, cinematic. It was the best thing. And he tried to do the movie thing. And, it, you know, I, I like Belly. I'm a big fan of Belly. It was very Me too. corny and it was very, you know. I like Belly. I like Belly. I think it's an underrated. I think <laughs> it it's an underrated music movie. video. But you, you, it's like one big music video. Yeah. The, but the right. opening scene of that movie. Is I love the movie. Oh, yeah, the it's opening the first five minutes yeah. is fantastic, man. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. I, I would not argue that. But any if you was a rapper, you was a shit, you would have hype. So it made sense. Like he wants to work with the best and very like people who are extremely high level with the art, regardless of what it because we can yeah. talk about his clothing line. Now I I see your style, and you don't really see my style, but I don't think you're a big fan of Kanye's um clothing line and shoes. Am I no, am I right? No, I don't own any of that. It's beyond, yeah. I mean. I don't Not have the for body me, right? for it. Like I, I, I could, you know, I, I think some of the the Yeezys, I guess, as you call them, the Adidas, those rub like, off on me a little bit. Like at some first, of like, those, some of those looked okay. Like you know, yeah, like okay. I still would never buy them. They're too expensive. I don't understand it. They look like all the new stuff looks like it's like from Mars or like space boots, and like it, it doesn't even look good to me. But that's high fat. He's high we're fat. We're old. So. We were old, man. We don't get it. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't rock that stuff. Yeah, the the this and it's funny. He, his he had a sneaker deal with Adidas first. He did. And I forgot what it called. It was like Red Octobers. Red October. I like yeah. those. So the those were kind of bulky, kind of. I I I would ne- I could not imagine wearing something like that. I just can't. yeah. But then he made, and then you see when he's talking about like he's doing the markups, he's drawing in it. Every yeah, everything seems very futuristic. But then his clothing seems like like something's bad is going to happen in the future. Like the move, like those I, I, those future it's videos. Like Mad Max. It's like Mad Max. Yeah, like why yeah. we all look all drabby? Why why are they look so brown and tan and yeah. dark? But, that, that, but that, when you, when you're dealing with like high fashion and even some of the like like. I used to be so I used to I used to like have a membership to like GQ and Esquire magazine, right? Because I just did good stories in there and you know whatever. And you would look at some of the ads of like the Prada, Gucci, uh, whatever, right? And it was always Benciaga, like, Benciaga yeah. and all that. And I, I never thought that stuff looked good. I always liked the Mark Echo. I walked. I wore a lot of Mark Echo stuff back in the day. Street fashion a little bit, right? Street Urban fashion, fashion, yeah, you know, fat functional, form, like you know. Should, yeah, stuff you yeah. actually would want. To but like. Kanye took the street fashion and kind of went the high the high fashion route a little bit. I think with his stuff and the runways, you know, it, it's just weird looking stuff. But it's for rich people and the kids now like it and they have money to spend. I don't know how these young kids spend thousands of dollars on shoes, but hey, whatever. I but become TikTokers never, or something. I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't do that, man. There's no. I, I, give, I, like I give props to Kanye on the fashion because he same thing happened in the fashion game. He tried to get in, they shut him out. What yeah. are you talking about? He would complain and say that they're not giving me a chance. All right, I'm going to do it myself. And that's the thing, like, if I had a, a little bit, just a little bit of his, like, drive and yeah. his um, confidence, you could take over the world. Like, because because yeah. his, his mind says, like, all right, I'm going to, all right, I took care of this music stuff. I'm going to still have, still perform high, high level music. And now I'm going to get into this fashion and I'm going to not just survive and dominate. Like how how you get to those that level, you know? It's Maybe crazy. None of us are into all, the stuff, but I think we all would want that. There's not there's only a handful of people that can do that. I mean, that you know what I mean? There's only a few that can have uh I've been thinking about I talked about this the other day. Like a lot of people can have great ideas, but if you don't have action behind an idea, the idea, in my opinion, means nothing. Right? So you have to have some action. Even if you if you fail, that's fine. You got to have action. And Kanye is an action guy. Definitely. You know, I remember, I don't know if you remember, he did an interview. I believe it might have been on, we did many of them when he was going through his thing. He talked to Sway. He talked yeah, to Charlemagne. I, I think he talked to David Letterman, I think. On, he was on a Letterman show and he just kind of went off. Like, I'm trying to get into, you know, I'm the next, I'm the next Walt Disney. I'm the next Steve Jobs. People just need to. You know, I have this brilliance. I have these ideas, but I need the. I don't got no money. I need the backing, but people won't give me a chance. And he's talking about going to Europe and, you know, people that look like me, I can't go to Europe and they won't even look at me. And, and like people thought he was crazy, but I think he was speaking a lot of truths. Yeah. And some of those, and especially that David, I think it was David Letterman, maybe Leno. I can't remember. But he was he was talking about like, I got ideas. 
I just need somebody to like give me a shot. So at this point, he's Kanye West. Like he's Kanye. Like he's still the man, right? And I, it just took me back to when he was a producer trying to be a rapper. He was just yeah. he needed he needed a shot. Somebody he conquered something. the music. Now he's trying to get into fashion, and now he's he's basically he is a billionaire from fashion, not from music. So he actually has done even greater monetarily in the fashion world than he has as the music world, which is absurd to think about because a lot of us look at Kanye. He's on a Mount Rushmore for some people in the hip hop world, right? Yeah. Uh, you think he's the best producer in the hip hop, but then what he's done with the clothing, he's actually had more success with that than he has with music, which is crazy to think about. Yeah. Um, considering, I mean, and I, I don't know, I think he says he's bipolar. Um, yeah, he, he 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 admittedly says he's bipolar. Yeah, he's so he's he has up. bouts of manic and manic where you're just you're full of energy and you have a lot of thoughts and you you, you need them out. You you know, and I think that seems yeah. like it strengthens the music. And I know he takes he took medication, he didn't like the medication. I think he's still he's currently on medication because I think he talked about you know weight gain. He's like, yeah. yeah, this pills make me um, get a little fatter. But yeah. the idea of that, that those that that part of his brain that does that is his biggest success. Like that's his biggest powerful. Like he called it and also, power. it could be his greatest weakness when he is ranting a little bit too much. And I noticed Cootie tried. He'll cut him off filming him when he, I guess we thought he was going too far. What he was saying, and yeah. in my opinion, those things he was saying that was not that far or like he was being crazy i think he was just he was getting hype and he was passionate but cootie wanted to protect him a little bit by cutting yeah. him off sometimes i, I noticed yeah. that at least in the third act yeah i know because i think you were sitting they were sitting in uh i think dominican republic or somewhere yeah. talking to like some real estate people and he was talking about you know and he just cut him off because he felt like maybe yeah he wanted to protect them or he didn't want to film that because he didn't deem it appropriate but like I think Kanye West is he's one of those cats that just, he's gonna say what he wants to say. You're gonna yeah. like it, you're gonna he's gonna sit with Donald Trump, he's gonna sign the hat, he doesn't care what you think about it, he's gonna tell the black community that you know you guys are still slaves, get stop the mentality of you know, like he said a lot, he's he said a lot of stuff that's rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And I think yeah. some of the things he probably wanna take back because of the way he said them, or maybe they were culturally well, well, they, yeah, they said uh how about you write it down first? His father's like, how about you write it down? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, which, is, like, which is fantastic advice, you know. Yeah. Um, but that that's part of his he he referenced it in a, a few songs. It's his superpower. His his bipolarness, his mind, and when he's crazy, that's his superpower. Because if, if Kanye's not like that, he's not making the thing he's making, he's not relevant. We're not talking about him now. He's just some ex rapper from the early two thousands. But yeah. what separates him is he's a little he's a little different. And I think a lot of the influential people currently, if you think about them, that, that are making waves in either technology and in media and whatever, they're a little different, right? They're socially awkward. They're a little different. They say things outlandish, but that's just who they are. And I think there's some power in that because they don't care about people's opinions. They're just going to be themselves. And I think some people might rub that the wrong way for them but other people sometimes gravitate towards it because they it's real you know they, they it is what it is so when when Kanye said this and he said this a while ago and now like the, the the name of the document genius when he said he's a genius do you agree that he's a genius oh, man i'm i'm such a uh i i feel like i'm not um smart enough or don't have enough knowledge to call anybody a genius you know it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a big word right. i think it's but i think it's very personal i think you know one person can say you know could say yeah hannibal's a genius for this but like somebody else could be like oh what genius you know right. but like, guys so, need it. <laughs> you know we, we you know we throw that word around but like yeah i think so i think in some ways he is i think he is i think when i look at him i look at him and i put him in the same space of like an elon musk Mm -hmm. Okay, Elon Musk to me is a genius, right? Steve Jobs, a little genius there, thinking about things that are. He has something. These guys have things in their mind. They have a, a vision that's 20, 30, 40, 50 years ahead of 
99.999% of the entire planet. So I think if you look at it like that, I think there is, yeah, you know, William, William Shakespeare, like he, he referenced, you know, Walt Disney, like these are like transcending figures. Vincent Van Gogh cut his ear off, right? Some would say he's a genius, right? So I think, I think, I don't think it's far fetched to put Kanye in that same room with those other people. Um, Beethoven, you know, like people that just stick out. There's a handful of them. And Kanye West has completely separated himself from the entire hip hop community, in my opinion, when it comes to that, as far as longevity, vision, doing things that nobody else has done in that community. So as far as hip hop concerned, I'll say he's a genius as far as hip hop goes. Genius as far as like, you know, some of the other guys I mentioned, you know, I, I don't know. But for hip hop, I, I think it's und undeniable. I think he is. Yes, I agree. I think it leans in terms of musical art and uh, creativity, artistry of, of music. Yeah. Definitely a genius. The guy's done too much. There's his, his catalog of work, his ability to sample. It's out of this world it yeah. like you said it's transcendent of just the ability to compose music yeah now he's successful as fashion i'm not a fashion expert i can't tell you if that's a genius but he's a billionaire yeah. from it so it must be some <laughs> level of high level of creativity um yeah. some of the shoes have, have have are starting to look aesthetically pleasing to me i'll say that but you know pricing is a whole different but i would look at them like well that looks comfortable and i like yeah. the shape of it but I'm not fast, but I know in terms of con composing music, there's a very, very few producers that like in another keyword you said, um, long like being able to do it for a long time. Yeah, most guys, they, you have a hot shot producer that kind of kills it for like Scott uh, Scott Storch for. Uh, yeah, for I was just movie. thinking the same. I was literally thinking of the same guy. That <laughs> guy is talented. I mean, yeah. I don't know what you call him a genius, but. That's doing a well, piano. He's talented. He's musically. Who can, yeah. And I think a lot of drugs and some other stuff to do. But damn, he could produce. And then he was hot for a couple of years. And, and due to his right? his yeah. like his own doing, not necessarily the music went bad. It just seemed like he was substance abuse and drug abuse and things that we we look at Kanye like this is this bad guy. But Kanye has not committed any laws, broken any laws. He ain't abusing anybody. All he does is act out on Twitter, and you know occasionally go out and do say something ridiculous yeah but um but there's potential like scott starch probably had potential but Kanye is realizing it so that's yeah. why i said on uh, the last teaser that we had was i think when it's all said and done i think Kanye was going to be the greatest hip-hop producer of all time i he's in his 40s i think at this point i think Kanye is 45 or 46 something like that yeah he is not going to stop making music and he keeps making high quality music. Yeah. He's always having some problem. So as much as this documentary covered a lot, the story's not over. Right? The story's not over. And it seems like the more issues he has, the better music is. I feel like uh, another artist I really like, The Weeknd. We, uh, I don't like The Weeknd when he's happy. The music is not as good. I like it when yeah. he was sad in the beginning, like sad, was, out of a sad. breakup or something. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So Kanye yeah. is always having drama around him. Like he said, he embraces the chaos and he just still produce. I'm talking about producing now in terms of rapping and having our yeah. albums. Like but I'm saying in terms of level of producing, I think he's going to produce probably into his sixties. A lot of these other producers kind of stop. They kind of, you know, like, yeah, Dre, I love Dre. Dre is in there a little bit. But he, you know, he's not producing in the high level compared to Kanye in the last, I would say, at least the last 10 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what, yeah. what are your thoughts on that, though? I know what you mean. I think, I don't know. I know some of the artists and things that Kanye's done and what he's produced, but I don't know enough of it. You know, so if, if you sat down the catalog of everything Kanye produced, I bet I probably, you know, all his stuff, you know, I know that, right? And I know some of the other things, but I probably don't know most of what he's produced. I'm sure there's a lot of be like, wow, I didn't know he did that. I didn't know he wrote that. I didn't know. He, oh, yeah. You know, I, I'm sure I wouldn't know the artist, but maybe I wasn't. I didn't know about the song or I didn't hear the song or put it together. Um, for me, like when I look at Kanye, it's hip hop. He, that's the genre he's in. Yeah. But I don't. I think he's past that. I think. I, I look at I, I could put him with other guys like Rick Rubin 
and the guy that produced the Beatles, and you know, like yeah, I think like, yeah, like, yeah, Rick Rubin is producer. Level, Rick Rubin yeah. would be there too, though, yeah, right? Definitely. He's done stuff with Jay Z. He obviously did, uh, you know, Beastie Boys and many other people. But like, you know, and he's been doing it for a long time, like since oh, yeah, the late seventies, yeah. I think. But I think Kanye's is like. I, I look at him as more than a producer. I just, I think, I think that's what he wants people to do. But is he the number one? I don't know. I guess I don't. You know, I think of Dre and you think of like Timberland and all Pharrell and Puff Daddy was a good producer. I mean, he put together two classic albums. Yeah. I mean, he put together Ready to Die. He put together Life After Death. I mean, he put together his albums. You know, um, there's yeah. other, you know, there's other people there. But I think Kanye, the longevity and the catalog of what he's done that is very different you know 808s and heartbreaks he makes a song 80 you know when i came out that was like like very 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 different it was different right? i was in it i was all into it i think it's just because of my taste for music like i, I was like oh i dig it now, he, i, like I know it. you can't sing kanye yeah but you all to it right and when you hear like street lights you hear these these songs obviously he's going that was a breakup album kind of thing i think it was yeah. with his fiance you know love lockdown like Heartbreak, heartbreak. It 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 it's it makes those are classics, man. Those are bangers. Yeah. I mean, those are good songs. Um, so you listen to every single Kanye album? Yes, I have every album. What's your favorite one? Maybe I, I, I should have asked you that before we started this. <laughs> no, no, no. There's just they're just different for me. Uh his his obviously his his uh his college dropout, I mean. Jesus walks to me. It's just when I heard, I was like, "Damn, that is like yeah. nothing I've ever heard," you know. Um, yeah. I think, I think, I think that's, that. that's probably my that's probably my favorite one. But I'm a big, and I, I don't want to be recent bias, but you know, I'm a huge Donda album fan. I love yeah. Donda. There's only a couple. There's like one skip on that whole album for me. I can listen to the whole album right now. I think it's very emotional. I think it's very um, real. It's like a Christian album without being a Christian album, you know, like it's it's not that that's a bad thing, but like the people he has on it, the different types of songs. He's on drill beats one song and then he's doing this orchestra kind of piece. It's just I mean, it's amazing. It's a piece of artwork, in my opinion. The yeah. music video he did with, you know, with it, it's just like come to life. I think it's yeah, come to life song. There's just a lot there. So I love the Donda album. I mean, I'm a huge fan. I've listened to that album more. I probably listened in the last what it came out six seven months ago. I don't know something like that, maybe a little bit more. I, that's the, I've listened to that album more than anything else in the last half year or one year, however long it's been out, than anything else. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah, I love I love a lot of his stuff. And life uh, life with Pablo or pa the Pablo album. I, there's a couple songs on there that hit me. Yeah, I, yeah, I think, yeah. That's a, I think that's an undervalued album. He always um, had Christianity. He always had his religion, his faith, yeah. and. I mean, his his biggest hit, Jesus Walks. Jesus Walks. That, early in, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean. Um, yeah, I think for me, at college, I just, it started everything, yeah. right? Um, but if I had, like, another album, like, if I could come off the top of my head, of something, like, powerful and strong, and also, like, he had a great features. I think it's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. That's, I, yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, they had, they had some powerful, I mean, song power. They had some really. Yeah good deal. he's got the song that's like uh he's got uh paul mccartney in it and, and and i can't remember the rihanna uh rihanna yeah it's a beautiful song yeah I mean, orchestra is in there or what i mean it's like it's crazy man yeah like and it's, i think it's more of i think most people kind of say that's more of the most cr uh, critically acclaimed album my dark yeah. twisted Family. for me i think that's it probably is. i'd put it third i just put it next to or right behind donda but yeah that's yeah. A, it's a fantastic fantastic album yeah uh yeah hell yeah i forgot all these and, and runaway i mean runaway that's was, a, yeah, yes. like nine minutes you just him, that piano that's the song i'm talking about it's got the piano thun, yeah thun. it's just i mean nobody does that in hip-hop not mainstream hip-hop you're not making songs starting it like that you no. know it's just he's on another level man well, especially yeah. nowadays but again we, we, now we're gonna sound like we're old like these kids nowadays what they listen to. <laughs> get off my lawn <laughs> get off my lawn <laughs> <laughs> But um, I don't know. We'll, we'll guess we'll see. We'll see. We'll see in a few years where he goes with this. But you know, you, you could tell that they need a part four, five, six because there's yeah, I, yeah. there's so much more. And I know he may run for president. I doubt he's going to do that. I know he likes us. He said that. I hope he does. 2024. Like, please yeah. don't. 
Yeah, don't do that. We, we need we need we need someone to actually know what they're doing because yeah. we're kind of screwed right now. Was gas? You know, we, we, we we do need a part four though because I felt like the third act uh, was rushed. Yeah, it condensed like there too many a things. lot. There was a little clips they put in about things, but it was comp- it was a little rushed for me. Um, it, it, that could have been a three, you know, another hour and a half of con- of, of of information and insight. Um, then maybe he didn't have it because it, he wasn't with Kanye, so he had to just reference things, right? Yeah, because, yeah, because cool. the way the way it's structured is not a documentary where you have any people you interview about yeah. the person. It's really yeah. him. And Kanye, uh, Kudi and Kanye. Yeah. They didn't really put any more characters in the story. So I felt they may have been some kind of constraint. Mm. But hopefully, I think either Kanye's t- interview to Kanye, like talk to him. Yeah. This way you watch him, but like let him speak. And hopefully, a lot of stuff made sense. So you could can kind of condense yeah. it into a conversation. But hopefully, I, yeah. I, you know what? I'm, I'm definitely sure they're going to release more. Cause it's just so much more that we can listen to, but um, I guess we could end it on this. Like this documentary inspired me. It hit me. It got me at the right time where I needed some inspiration to keep moving forward with the things I wanted to do. Yeah. And no matter, and it, the way he had to put it where no one believed in him or very few, except like your, your, your boys and your family who believes in you just keep going, keep working, keep creating, let people look at your stuff and give you feedback but just keep it moving. That's probably the biggest lesson I got from a documentary. What's yours? No, you're spot on, man. I think, um, you know, you you think about like, man, I think I'm doing good with this, or I think I'm on the right track with this. And then you watch something like that and you watch somebody with that much drive, talent, passion, you watch somebody with that much, just like, like get out of my way. Like, you know, either with me or you're not, but I'm going here. And, you know, this is what's going to happen, right? Yeah, yeah. And with that much confidence to, to, to speak things into existence is like, you know, it's inspiring. It makes me, it makes me feel super lazy. <laughs> and, but it makes, you know, it makes me feel like I think I've done something. No, I haven't done anything. <laughs> I need, you know, I could do more. It makes me want to like do more. It makes me want to like, it's kind of like, you know, you watch like an inspiring movie and you're like, I got to get up and and you watch Rocky, he's like, I got to, I want, I want to run. I got to work, work out, out yeah. some Definitely. raw eggs right now. You know, <laughs> that's what I got from Kanye. I'm like, I, I, I need to, I need to continue to work on the things that I know I could do things. I'm passionate about thing. You know, I want to be here in 10 years. I want to do this thing. I got to start. I got to, I got to do it now. I can't wait. I got to do it now. And I think that that's, I got that. That's one of the things that, that left me. It's just motivate the motivation, man. Like, when you look at somebody that, that that's that successful, that was just a regular dude. Like Kanye West was like a dude I could I could have lunch with at my high school table, right? Yeah. And he'd be like maybe a little annoying, but like he's like super smart, but like nobody took him serious. But he kept doing it and he kept doing it. And people that do that and have that mindset, I think, are usually pretty successful. So it just makes me want to grind even more, man. It's just you know, it was a, it was a really good documentary. I thought the guy Cootie did a fantastic job putting that together. Yeah, man. Uh, it's it's ex- it was exciting. It was very emotional, powerful, and I, I love the names of the episodes. It was a vision, a purpose, an awakening, and I think that's something we yeah. all can take a little bit of everything out and kind of craft our own story. So, yeah, man. Sure. Well, yeah, it was good. I'm probably gonna watch it again anytime I need something to kind of like. Okay, I'm gonna rut. Let me watch something that I know will kind of fire me up. So. It's fantastic, and hopefully, we you know we could put a little bit of that into this venture here with our uh, little pop Absolutely. music. Pedro. Um, we, we, we're gonna have to start knocking on doors and 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 telling people to listen. <laughs> and, you know, whatever, whatever you do in the podcast world to make you know, um, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, we we, we got this. Uh, and actually, we didn't even announce this in the beginning, but we crossed over a hundred subscribers before yes. we even kind of started it like we started with these teasers but we haven't started so there's enough of you guys out there who believe in us and enjoy what we do so thank you very much for that this is why we've been doing the teasers because we we saw people you know subscribing and talking about it and sending messages text and you know instagram the whole thing so we really appreciate you guys for even checking this out but we're almost there we're almost there. We're, we're, you know, by the time you listen to this, we'll be a week out. And we, we already decided what we're going to do uh, Wednesday. 
June 8th, we're going to start live. We're going to have a live uh, on YouTube. And, you know, who cool thing with uh, Pedro and at least myself that we have some experience doing live so, podcasts or at least live streaming. So it's going to be a really bit. fantastic show. We're going to have a lot to talk about. Obviously, we're going to be talking about hip hop. We're going to be talking about the NBA finals. I don't know, Pedro, you want to talk about, you want to say your pick now or you want to wait till next week? Oh, well, I want the Celtics to win because Jason Tatum from St. Louis and I live in St. Louis and I've actually, funny story, I've been in the same gym as him once. I never met him, didn't shake his hand. We didn't play one-on-one, but we were in the same gym. He's from, he went to Chaminade High School. Nice. Had a clinic there years ago. And uh, I'm rooting for him because he's a St. Louis boy. Do you, and, do you know uh, that he has a, a YouTube video? Yes. That has like a billion views and him yes. showing how to tie and tie. I saw yes, that. and that's him at Chaminade. He was, yeah, he was like a freshman or sophomore at Chaminade. And he did that. That's <laughs> that cool. <laughs> it's awesome, man. It's now awesome. He, you know, he he eliminated Kevin Durant, <laughs> the Greek Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Jimmy Butler, who played his heart out. Yes, that's impressive. It is. Uh, so I'm, rooting, I'm rooting for him because I think uh, if he wins, that's you know he's you know the next level of these stars. You know, Giannis and him and Luca, and you know we got the older guys, LeBron and KD and Steph. They're getting a little older. Man, oh, man. So I think the Warriors would prop. If I was a betting man, I'd put money on the Warriors, but I would like the Celtics to win. And I'm just hoping for a game seven because there's nothing better in sports than an NBA game seven, in my opinion. Well, most That's definitely. the best sporting event around. So. Well, we'll we'll break it down and hopefully guys jump in on that uh, day. Come in, tell uh, Pedro, you don't know what he's talking about. And say, but, <laughs> Please but we tell def- me that. <laughs> we gonna definitely enjoy that. Um, but on that note, I'm Hannibal. He's Pedro. Thank you for taking the time to listen to watch this teaser episode. We really appreciate it. And I guess we'll see you guys next week. Next week, live, baby. Later.